It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. This is the show for you if you're looking for some common sense and practical advice that you can use for your own planning and investing. Bob and I try to give you practical tips so that if you're planning now to be retired in the next couple of years, or even if you're retired right now each week, we give you common sense tips, practical advice that you can apply to make sure you're on your path to financial independence. We've got a great podcast for you this episode. We're going to talk about the seven deadly sins of retirement. Make sure that you're not committing any of these sins. We're going to break them down for you. We have this week's financial propaganda. We're going to talk about some of the noise in the media this week that you want to avoid with your planning and investing. And finally, we have our spotlight segment today with our colleague, certified financial planner, Courtney Dominguez, where she talks about a real retirement plan she worked on, talks about some of the pitfalls so you can avoid those same pitfalls with your planning and investing. It's going to be a great show. There's probably seven deadly sins of retirement that you and I see on a regular basis. So I thought we could discuss those today. The first one being is kind of an obvious one, but not saving enough or anything. That's a real problem. Well, Rob, you know, it's not just for baby boomers, for any generation, whether you're just coming out of college, whether you're a millennial, you're Gen X, Gen Y, baby boomer, these are deadly sins if you commit them because you're not going to be able to retire or stay retired. And the first one, believe it or not, is not only not saving enough, how about not saving anything? Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, at that point, man, you got problems. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so many times in my career, I've heard people say to me, well, you know, I'm not going to make it past 60. So why do I bother saving? Well, guess what? People are living the 90 to 100. The fastest growing segment of population are people living over 100. So saving is critical. That's the number one sin. Make sure you're maximizing your savings every year in your 401k, in your IRA, in your personal account. What are some yeah, of the other sins, Roddy? Uh, draining your retirement savings. Well, wow, it's a tempting lump sum of money, right? You might want to buy that fancy car, a new boat, or you might want to buy that condo in Florida. But touching your retirement savings for things that aren't necessarily towards your retirement is definitely a killer. Well, I think it's important too. This is why you need to run your financial plan every single year. Because um, Bob, I know you've come across this with a couple of your clients. It was a great year in the market. So your client thinks they can spend even more money, but the reality of it is you have to stick to some kind of spending discipline because if you start to overspend in some of those years, that could drain your retirement for later on, and that needs to be updated very often. Yeah, right. such a great point. We just had a fabulous 10 years in the financial markets, and a lot of, a lot of us predict the future based on our most recent experience. And if you think the returns will be identical in the next 10 years, Get another thing coming. So you really do have to do those projections on an annual basis. The other one that we see a lot is not calculating a retirement savings goal at all, which is kind of astonishing, right? You know, I'm not really surprised at that, Rye, because, you know, every time we sit down with a new client or a prospective client, we find out that they're working with someone who has the title of financial advisor, but it turns out they're just a financial product salesperson. Yeah. And it's crazy to think, but 25% of us who have financial advisors still don't have a target. So I think that's a real red flag. If you're working with some sort of financial professional or maybe a couple of financial professionals, you really got to make sure that somebody is sitting down with you and putting those goals in place. And it's never too early. If you're five years out from retirement, 10 years out from retirement, the earlier you get going on those targets, the better, the more solid your financial plan is going to be. Another big one that we see a lot of baby boomers out there not paying attention to is underestimating healthcare costs. Yeah, unfortunately, Rye, that, that comes to the forefront once you're retired and once you start getting these huge bills for prescriptions and for doctor's appointments. And the thing that's amazing is that based on most recent studies done by places like Fidelity, you're going to need somewhere between a quarter and a half a million dollars to cover additional health costs in retirement. And that's a good question to ask yourself. If my portfolio took a half a million dollar hit, is that going to affect my lifestyle? Because if that's the case, You've got to go back to the drawing board to make sure that you're spending what you really can afford to spend, especially in light of those higher healthcare costs. Another one that's just in line with that, Bob, number five on our deadly sins is ignoring long-term care costs, which can be a retirement killer in terms of what the expenses are going to look like. 
We're all going to have some type of cost for long-term care for those last couple of years of life, right? And the thing that blows my mind is most of you think that's going to be covered by Medicare. Guess how much Medicare covers for long-term care costs, right? I know it's going to be an abysmal number. What is it? Zero, not a nickel. Wow. Yeah, that's scary. That's scary. You know, it has to be in your plan, whether you self-insure, you look to get a long-term care policy, or maybe it's a, a combination of self-insuring, but that has to be addressed in your retirement plan. Number six on our deadly sin list, Bob, is mishandling your retirement date. A lot of us think we can just work forever, and that's not the case. A lot of you think you're going to work past 65 or 70, and a lot of this is not in your control. Some of it might be a health problem, might be the company that you work for no longer needs your, your services. But the thing that I found in the surveys that I've read is that less than 10% of people who plan to work past 70 actually do. So you need an income replacement plan, Rye. You're, everybody's going to retire someday, whether you want to or not. Yeah. So I think don't call retirement, say, hey, maybe I want to keep working great, but have a date where you're financially independent, even if you want to keep working. So maybe we use a different euphemism, but find your financial independence date. And number seven, Bob, on our deadly sin list is not setting affairs in order, which we see all the time, especially when one spouse passes away. Right. It's not just worrying about whether your spouse is gone, but look at yourself. Look at your family's history. Is there a history of dementia or diminished capacity? You, know, you just have to prepare for it. Just have a document prepared so that there's someone who can make decisions in your place. Yeah, exactly right. And there's simple legal docs to have. And that's a good question to ask yourself. When was the last time you had your legal dops updated? My guess is it was probably 10, 15 years ago. Your circumstances have changed a lot. So having that will updated is not the most cost prohibitive thing to do. Get it done. Make sure that your affairs are in order. Yeah. And even if you did this a couple of years ago, Rye, you may have someone who's in charge of your life that you've given power of attorney and you don't even talk to that person anymore, or they may be dead. So you want to make sure those docs are up to date every year. That's where a great fiduciary comes into play. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we will look at everything. It's the only financial review you need right now. All you have to do is gather all your statements, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, call or text us. We're going to sit down with you and review everything and help you to build your own personalized 360 financial portal that will allow you to become financially organized to the point where you can pick that financial independence date and not worry about whether you can retire or when you have to retire. We're going to take your information and break down your portfolio to the three key elements of a successful strategy. We're going to be certain that you're well diversified, that you have assets spread across different asset classes that reduces the volatility that bulletproofs your portfolio against future volatility and investment crashes. We're going to look at cost. I don't know about you, but I simply despise being overcharged by anyone. And I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio and my own investments. And in addition, we're going to look at income. Everyone needs to have an income plan. You have better outcomes with more income, and you want to have a plan where you fill that income gap once you are retired. Now, if you're currently retired, our number one goal is to be able to stay retired and have that lifetime of income that we can't outlive. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan that will answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money, or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for close to 45 years. That's right. For over four decades, we've been helping families just like yours to get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the highest odds of success and the least amount of risk. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692 and tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or click the get started button on bbullish.com.
It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the profane world of financial propaganda? Well, Ry, the media never lets me down uh, when we have a 5% correction. We get yep. all these great articles about how scary the stock market is now and how we're dangerously close to a classic sell signal. Oh, boy. What is this classic sell signal that uh, is being talked about, Bob? Well, you know, everybody wants to have a mechanical way of minimizing risk. So they simply take a chart and they look at the 200-day moving average, right? This is just taking the last 200 days and averaging the price and drawing a line. And if the stock market drops below that line, you simply should sell everything. Huh, that sounds like a really easy uh, solution. I mean, if it's, uh, does it work? Well, according to this article, uh, it works every time because every crash in history started with the market breaking its 200-day moving average. However, every time the market drops, it drops to that level and then bounces back eventually. You just don't know if each drop is going to continue into a crash or not, even though there's only been a few crashes in history. Of course... You know, if you use this indicator, you got out of the market back in 2014. And I think you missed the heck of a move since then, right? <laughs> so it's like, okay, if it hits this level, it may or may not be going down further. That's not very helpful. <laughs> well, right. First of all, you made a tremendous amount of money in the market in the last 10 years. So if you sell out because the market has a correction, you got to pay capital gains tax on all those gains. Secondly, what if it bounces right back in? Then you got to buy back in again. And then it goes down again next week. So you got transaction costs going in and out. Sooner or later, you got to trade yourself into oblivion. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. And it's just, you know, time and time again, when we have these these ominous signs and things like that, they just they, there's no real value because we talk about this all the time. But when you're building your portfolio for retirement, you really are building it for, for income, right? And the thing about owning money in the market per se, and the one thing that doesn't get talked about enough is stocks pay cash flow, right? And if you're out of stocks, you're missing that cash flow trying to get in and out of those those stocks, depending on if we think it's going up or down. Whereas if you just sit in them, you collect that cash flow, Bob, quarter after quarter, it's like getting a paycheck. And that's really a critical component to building your retirement portfolio is building a portfolio of stocks that pay dividends that you're going to hold for a very, very long time. You know, Rise, I talked about my market commentary last week. When you own stocks that pay dividends, which most stocks do, uh, you get paid to wait till the market goes to an all-time record high like it has every time in your life. Since you were born, the market's been making new highs throughout your entire lifetime. You know, financial propaganda likes to say this time is different. Well, it hasn't been different since you were born. So they've been wrong 100% of the time. It's true. It's true. And, you know, kind of playing along with that, Bob, I found an article this week that also was talking about some ominous signals in the market. Investors seek safety in bonds, alarming U.S. markets that a recession may be in the offing. And this article is talking a lot about what you might have heard lately is this inverted yield curve. And all that means is the short term of the three month treasury right now is paying a yield that's higher than what you can get on a 10 year treasury. Whereas traditionally, the longer the bond is, the higher the yield is. So this inversion has predicted a lot of recessions in the past. Well, that's great, Rye. So you can't, you can't anticipate a recession based on an inverted yield curve because what happens if two days from now, the yield curve is no longer inverted? <laughs> Good point. Good point. Right. So it doesn't have to stay inverted for a very long time. But I think there's another dangerous thing in here too, Bob, that we're not talking a lot about is interest rates have been going lower and lower. And you know everyone's talking about how that could be a dangerous sign for the market. But what really that's a dangerous sign for is what we talked about earlier in the show is if you own bond funds, because mm -hmm. you're putting money into these bond funds when the rates are really, really low. What if rates start to go up again, which is very possible this year because the global economy could pick up speed. And if that happens, all of a sudden those bond funds start depreciating. And that in a way can be a lot more risky than the stock market right now. When you plan for retirement, Ry, you want to have a fixed stream of income. And that's why you buy bonds because traditionally they're called fixed income investments. Unfortunately, yes. with a bond fund, they're not fixed. You can't predict 
what you're going to get in a check next month, let alone what you're going to get next year, the year after. And if interest rates go up, you want to have a bond that comes due. So bonds are a very critical part of your portfolio. You need to own the right ones. That's so clear, especially when interest rates are as volatile as they've been over your lifetime. Yeah, exactly. It's more important than ever that you do that right. And then on the stock side, with yields so low on the bond side, what you have to realize is stocks are more attractive than ever. If you just look at a basket of high dividend paying U.S. stocks right now, Bob, you're getting close to 4% just in dividends. Now think about it. Your highest paying money market fund right now is paying maybe 2.5%, and you've got to pay ordinary income rates on that. So maybe after you pay taxes, you're at 1.6% or something like that. We just said the 10-year treasury is paying now like under 2.3%. So just the cash you receive every year on stocks is way more attractive than your other alternatives. And that has nothing to do with if the market goes up or down. So you have to be really smart about how you're building your portfolio for income right now. And as much fear as the media is talking about the stock market, well, right now the dividends are extremely attractive. And if you're building your portfolio for retirement, we'll keep saying at nauseum, income is king or queen. You need to have that income stream and using stocks is a big component of that. You know, Ryan, you're so right. Investing is is part art. It's part science. It just can't be based on past performance and what something's done before. And there's opportunities in the market every single day it's open. So if you want to have a fixed income portfolio where you know you're going to get your money back, you know what interest rate you're going to get, and you can't just blindly buy dividend paying stocks. You want to make sure that you're buying them at the right time. Stocks go on sale and they're on sale this week, but certain segments of the market are on sale more than others. So it's no different than going to Walmart. Uh, when you go out and you buy different products in your shopping cart, you want to make sure that you're buying quality and buying value when you invest those hard-earned dollars. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888, or check out the show notes for the episode at bbullish.com for a link. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense, practical advice you can use if you're planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts, money saved in taxes. It's just as green as any money you can make invested. We give you five ways to do that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Everything from health savings accounts, Roth conversions, 401ks, We give you five ways to put more money in your pocket, save on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show. My colleague, Bob's colleague, Courtney C. Money Dominguez, certified financial planner. I go on and on. (laughs) Courtney, thanks for being on the show this morning. Thanks for having me as always. So you've had some big news lately. That I have. <laughs> Getting engaged. Yes. Uh, planning a wedding now. Lots of weddings that you're going to this summer. I mean, man, it's, I'm honored you were able to fit some time in for our show. I would never miss time for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and don't forget so, being on national TV, right? What's the end on national TV, on the top of everything else, whether it's CNBC, <laughs> Fox Business. I mean, man, oh, man. You guys can keep it going. I'll take this all day. <laughs> Well, this is our spotlight segment, and every week we dissect a real financial plan, and we uncover what we call the flaws, or what you would call pain points, P-A-Y-N-E, that is, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing, and you worked on a case recently, so why don't you give us the breakdown and talk about how you helped this couple get on their path to financial freedom? 
Yeah. So this couple I met with is just recently retired, and they're coming to us to make sure that all of their investments are really set up, that they can stay comfortably retired throughout their lifetime. And their biggest concern is they said, Courtney, we are invested about half in the S&P 500, but we feel like we're performing less than half the S&P 500. We have no idea why that's happening. Can you help us? Okay. So basically, it's like, look, we're invested in the US market. We know the US market's done awesome. Mm -hmm. But somehow our portfolio is not doing awesome and we thought we were invested in in the S&P or the U.S. market. Exactly, which seems counterintuitive. So we said, let's definitely get to the bottom of this here. So what happened? I want to know. Now, one of the biggest issues that this couple ran into is they have a lot of hidden fees, which we talk about a lot on this show, and just how much it can eat away from your return over time. Now, just to break this down a little bit, Let's say that the S&P 500, which they say they're invested in, had done 10% last year. Okay. They said, well, I'm invested in half of that. I would assume we'd at least do 5%, but they were doing more like 2%. And they said, why is this happening? Yes. And if you actually look in their accounts, they have a lot of like high cost annuities, which have a lot of hidden fees that we actually broke out for them. So some of their accounts are actually close to 4% a year in fees. Wow. That's shocking. Shocking. So if the S&P 500 did 5%, but you're paying 4% in fees, that's why you're not getting the return that you'd expect to see over time. But you don't see those fees. You just see yourself getting no return. That's why we call them hidden fees. You don't really see them, but they're there. So Bob, are you shocked that these insurance companies that sold these annuities are charging exorbitant fees? Was that news to you? Well, you know, it just reminds me of a client I met with this week who spoke to his neighbor about the same issue. And his neighbor argued to his blue in the face. He says, you don't understand. I have annuities where I get all the upside and I have no downside risk. Well, as it turns out, you don't get all the upside. You get a little bit of the upside. And that explains that it's these exorbitant costs that cap your return that, you know, are in the prospectus, but certainly not on your statement every month. Right, Court? Exactly. Yeah, and those prospectuses, this is what we do for a living, and even we have a hard time finding those, So, which <laughs> which just goes to say how hard these fees really are to find. We, we build the most sophisticated spreadsheets in the world to explain to you how your annuity actually works, because they're that complicated, because you really have to break them down, because they're all a little bit different. I mean, I think a good rule of thumb is with an annuity is, for whatever they give you, you always give something up. Exactly. I couldn't mm-hmm. have said that better yeah, myself. So true. And the shame of it is, you know, over the last 10 years, the majority of our clients have more than doubled their money, where if they had all the same money in an annuity, they'd barely be at the same value. Right. And kind of going to what they're giving up in these annuity products also is they're actually giving up potential income, which is one of the most important things that we need in retirement. Now, this couple specifically, they actually have a lot of their current expenses covered by their income sources, which is great. They have Social Security, they have pensions coming in. So we said, okay, there's not necessarily an income gap. However, we dug into this and we realized one of their income sources is actually going to end in about three years. So one thing this couple Hmm. didn't realize, which we immediately found is a problem, is they don't have an income gap now, but if they're not strategic about it, they will have an income gap in about three years from now. So one thing we could do is make sure that we're not just covering their income now, but we have additional about $30,000 of income a year above and beyond what they're needing, which means that can compound upon itself. We can reinvest it back into their accounts so that in three years from now, we're building it up to make sure that we know that they're going to have their gap filled at that point in time. And you need to make those changes now and be forward looking. Yeah. And that was a big thing that we were able to solve for them. Yeah, because that's the other thing is you always hear income for life. And it just sounds so great to if you're going to be retired or I'm a retiree right now. But the reality is there's other ways to generate income and you don't have to give up as much. Because a lot of times when you get that income for life, you give up your principal and that's a huge deal. Like who wants to give up their whole principle in retirement to an insurance company. That just sounds like a bad deal. Yeah, I know. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and now this just goes to show why it's so important to sit down with a certified financial planner like you, Courtney, because, you know, there's things you know, but then there's things that you don't know. So here's a situation where they just looked at the, the data and they'd think, well, we're in great shape. Little did they know they're going to lose an income stream three years from now. And they didn't have any idea how to fix that. So they didn't even know they had a problem that had to be fixed. And, you know, by you just sitting down and and breaking it down to the numbers, doing the analysis, it's really kind of self-evident. But I think more importantly, 
increase in their annual income by $30,000 a year is huge. That's real money. It's going to add up over time. I couldn't have said that better, Bob. The last thing I'd mention here, too, is we want to make sure that their income is growing over time because inflation is going to kick in. And that's one of our biggest enemies in retirement. The problem with a lot of those annuities is that income stream is not going to keep up with inflation. It's actually going to stay stagnant. And that's not going to address one of your biggest risks in retirement. Yeah, exactly. You need an increasing cash flow investment. Well, Courtney, another financial masterpiece. Great job on this case and getting these people on their track to financial freedom. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full review like this where we look at everything. Simply bring those statements in. I'm sure they're in now for May. Bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to look at the whole picture at a bird's eye view and look at all the critical components. We're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio bulletproof? Is it protected? If the market goes down, what safety do you have in your portfolio? Do you own a lot of high-risk bond funds? We're going to point out all the risks in your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. We're able to double. We're able to increase the amount of income by 30000 for this couple and give them an income stream that they cannot live. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in those investment portfolios. This couple is paying 3 4% a year on some of their investments and didn't know it. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio and show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket. And finally, we're going to look at income. Have you built an income stream in retirement that you're not going to outlive? How do you optimize your income? We're going to show you how to do that so you have this stream of income that you can outlive. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.